Hi, this is Jeremy with Fundamental Tennis. There are four ways or four locations that you can make an error on any stroke in tennis. We're going to talk specifically about the forehand ground stroke. Of course, you can miss the ball left or right of the court. You can hit it in the net and you can miss it long past the baseline. I'm going to show you the fix for the number one fear that most players have when it comes to the error location, where they don't want to miss it the most, and that is long past the baseline. Players hate hitting the ball long past the baseline. It's often actually the most common type of error or error location that players have. Um, could be for all levels of tennis players. So I'm going to show you why you're hitting the ball long past the baseline. I'm going to give you the fix for this. Uh, every time you hit it long past the baseline, you will know why it happened after you watch this video. And I'm going to give you some progressions to help you fix, uh, lessen the chance of you hitting the ball long past the baseline. These progressions also happen to be uh, great progressions to help you with getting top spin, improving your top spin, and other fundamentals of the forehand as well. I'm also going to talk about the over the shoulder finish or follow through on the forehand ground stroke and the several issues with that follow through and how it can lead to you hitting the ball long past the baseline. So these progressions and this fix and knowing the why, why you're hitting the ball past the baseline, this is going to help you a great deal in improving your control and your power. You're going to want a semi-western grip or something close to a semi-western grip for your forehand. Let's talk quickly about, I mentioned earlier, the biggest factor that determines where the ball will go. If at contact your strings are facing up, the ball will go up. If at contact the strings are facing down, the ball goes down. So the answer is the angle of the strings at contact is the biggest factor that determines where the ball goes. Now, if the ball is going long past the baseline, that obviously means your strings are facing up, as you can see here, when you make contact. What we want, of course, is to have the strings at this angle or even slightly closed during the hit. You can get away with that if you have enough racket head speed. But again, if the ball goes past the baseline, you always know why that's happening. The strings are facing up at contact. Now, it really doesn't matter if you know why you're hitting it too far past the baseline if you don't know how to fix it. So let's talk quickly about the fix. I'm going to back up here so you can see my, my swing. Now, I'm going to tell you a biomechanical term. You don't need to memorize this term, but you do need to follow and understand what I'm talking about here. If we rotate our hitting arm during the contact phase, it will allow us to keep the hitting side of the strings to the target at contact and during the hitting phase. So this uh, rotation of the arm is called long axis rotation. The shoulder rotates internally and the forearm pronates. Now, it can be difficult to see if my, my arm rotating, so what I'd like you to look for is the hitting side of the strings should be facing the target after contact. So see how my strings are facing you when the racket is vertical, okay? If after I hit the strings are pointing to my left as a righty, then that means I didn't rotate my arm. When you don't rotate your hitting arm during the contact phase, you are going to greatly increase the chance that your strings will be open at contact. So again, the rotation of, this, of your arm, your hitting arm during the hit, allows you to keep the plane of the strings at a constant angle during the contact phase. And we've already talked about how the angle of the strings is the biggest factor that determines where the ball goes. Now, the problem with the over the shoulder follow through is it's gonna naturally make you want to not rotate your hitting arm, causing you to much more likely open the racket face as opposed to if you did rotate your hitting arm. So I'm gonna show you a different follow through soon and, and, and you're gonna see how it's gonna really help you to control the angle of the strings and greatly lessen the chance that you'll hit the ball past the baseline. So the biggest visual or the biggest thing I want you to take away or the most important thing I want you to think about is after you hit the ball, you need the hitting side of the strings to point to your target after contact. If you did, that means that you rotated your arm correctly. Again, if the strings are pointing to the left after you hit as a righty, then that means you did not rotate the hitting arm. Also, the issue with following over the shoulder is the follow through is really a byproduct of the swing path. 
So if you have only the follow through over the shoulder, then you only have one swing path. So tactically, you can't do as much with the ball. You don't have as many options. So the over the shoulder follow through, I'm not against it, but there is a better way. Again, you don't even need a partner. I'm going to do it by myself to show you here. You're going to be about the depth of the service line or even closer to the net than that. You're going to start by just tossing the ball up so that you don't have to move to hit it. You're going to start with your racket low, very short backswing. You could start with your racket up here, but I prefer with the racket low. If you start up here, as long as you get underneath the ball before you hit it, you'll be just fine. So very short backswing, I toss to myself. Contact, I finish as high as I can. My hitting hand is at the level of the top of my head and the hitting side of the strings is facing my target. So I want you to hold every finish and check every finish. I get under the ball, contact, finish high, hold every finish, check every finish. I'll give you two more here. Notice how the, my hitting hand is in front of my head. I'm not following through and my arm is relatively straight here. One more time, get under the ball, contact. Most important part is the hitting side of the strings to the target. And the other checkpoint I would say is your hand should be at about head level. We're gonna add a bit more length to the swing, almost get to the full follow through, but very important, we're gonna first pass through this position, which was the finished position of our previous strokes progression. We're gonna pass through this position in a continuous motion until we get to here, in which the hitting side of the strings are facing the target on the finish still. We hold the finish, we check the finish. Also, your hitting hand should be to the outside of your non-dominant shoulder. It should not be in front of your body or in line with your shoulder. It should be like this, to the outside of the shoulder. That's gonna encourage you to have the right swing path and keep the strings to the target to really get that control you're looking for. So let me show you, same beginning here, racket low, you could start up here if you think you can do it that way. Contact and finish. So I still pass through this position, guys. I'm not going from the hit straight to here. I gotta get my hand to this position with the strings forward and then I get to there in a continuous motion. Watch again. I check the finish, and I hold the finish. You're gonna see it starts to look like something you might see on TV, right? See that there? Also really important, I'm gonna show you in this view, your hitting hand needs to finish in front. As you can see, I'm, I'm not finishing behind me. I'm not following through anywhere here yet. I'm finishing like so. Let me give you two more, one more from the side view. Okay, racket's finishing in front, as you can see. Now, let me give you one this way again. I'm gonna swing a little faster. You can see it looks a bit like something you see on TV, right? I'm not following through all the way yet. Okay, that's gonna be the next progression. Last progression, we're gonna add the full length of the swing. We're gonna finish with the hitting hand to the outside of your shoulder. No more over the shoulder finishes or wrapping the racket around your neck as that limits what you can do with the ball, among other things in which we've already talked about. Now, if you remember the first progression, we finished with the racket like this, and the second progression, we finished with the racket like that. We're gonna still do both of those things, except pass through those two positions in a continuous motion. So it looks like this. There's the first progression, there's the second. And instead of stopping short, you just let it happen naturally. Just have a little acceleration, and you'll no longer stop short of the finish. As you'll see here, I'll give you a side view first. You see I'm finishing behind my back now, but not over the shoulder behind my back, to the outside of my body. You see this? You're gonna finish with the hitting hand typically between your shoulder and your rib cage. Let me show you again from the side. Okay, one more time. Most important thing is you still need to swing 
relatively slowly, because I want you to be really mindful of your racket face angle, have that awareness. Remember, at contact, until right here, we should still have our strings to the target. And then you just let it happen. Let the finish happen. If you have enough acceleration, the racket will finish properly. The follow through again is a byproduct of the swing path. So if your swing path is correct, meaning you have this part right and this part right, your follow through will be right as well. Let me show you a couple from this view here. You know, swing relatively slowly. All right, we got a lot of spin on that ball. So you're doing a longer swing here, a little more acceleration. So you're going to start to see a lot of speed and spin with very little effort. Strength to the target after I hit. And this finish to the outside of the shoulder will really help you get that arm rotation, which is so key to modern tennis. Once you feel you've mastered these first three progressions, you're going to want to grab a partner and rally with your partner from service line to service line in a controlled environment. Keep the ball in play down the center of the court. When you're ready, you can back up a couple steps and rally from there. Eventually, you'll find yourself rallying from the baseline. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope you found great value in watching this video.